M. The Media Project. M. The Media Project. Use as directed. Some side effects may include having an open mind, having your own opinion, and having a sense of humor. But don't take rectally because it's your phone, tablet, or computer, and that's really not a good idea. M. The Media Project. Kid tested, mother approved. As far as we know. All right, we have everything we need for a pop culture podcast. We have interviews, group discussions, and live readings. What are we missing? A host, man. You need a host. Hold on a minute. Hey, kid. Who, me? You ever hosted a podcast before? No. Good, you're hired. And that's how the Mental Suppository got its start. New episodes drop every Friday. And be sure to subscribe to M the Media Project's Patreon page. Oh, boy. Excuse me, do you mind if I join you? Hello and welcome to the Mental Suppository. I'm Brett Herholt. I'm Jamie Billings. Andrew Shanley. I'm Wayne Nevis. Before we begin, we should mention a new sponsor. Uh, and I'm sure it'll be great. Like your mom. Whoa, what? Did not expect that from Wayne. Like your mom. Well played. This episode is sponsored by Devious Art Scene, encouraging people's odds, fetishes, and questionable fan fiction since 2000. See Dora the Explorer in a way... You never wanted to see her. Sexy powerful puff girls? Yep, somebody has probably done it. Fifty Shades of Grey with Rainbow Bright and Sugar Beer? They got that too. Have a fetish for Barbie in an Ewok outfit? They have it. Looking for questionable adventure time with Finn? You know it. Remember Prairie Dawn from Sesame Street? You will now. Use their premium site for free for five months. Just type in the promo code. I didn't realize people were into that with a question mark at the end. Devious Artsy. They won't judge you. That's for your friends, family, and internet to do. Nice. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> ah, so um, last week we uh, discussed the uh, we discussed uh, the new Masters of the Universe revelations. He man, that's the one. And uh, I, it's I've noticed a lot of people have been writing some things about it. There have been some people who have been getting kind of pissed off about it. People saying. In people who hadn't even seen it yet, I I remember watching one oh, YouTube video of a guy who was just who was just um, you know uh, he used the word woke a lot when he was uh, c criticizing it, and I'm just thinking to myself, and I, I'm just going to make a, f uh, a, five, a few points and then kind of uh, end it there. But uh, have you are you have you been watching the same show as I have? He Man was kind of woke before the word woke was uh, a word. It was uh, an, it was one of the most nonviolent cartoons. In the 1980s, He-Man didn't use his sword. There was a moral right. at the end. We mentioned that he uh, he he didn't really fight. I don't. We no, don't think and, we saw him punch anybody. And they couldn't. He threw a lot of things. Yeah, he, he it, would throw like a boulder at somebody. But a lot of that was standards and practices at the time. I mean, they ended up getting a. I think I mentioned last week. It may, I may or may not have, or I may might have meant to, but they actually got a a, a criticism from one the, one of the people advising the show. It's like. You shouldn't uh, have P Man picking up a tree because kids will try to emulate it. Yeah, you because mentioned we that. Because we were all yeah. we were all That's that right. stupid back then that we would have tried to pick up a tree. Or but, that strong. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the other thing was uh, they he, his criticism was was uh, Tila you know was Tila looking more masculine than she did in the show. And I'm thinking to myself, Tila was always kind of a tomboy on the show. I mean, even though the the character had like you know yeah the character had like uh, curves. And oh, I think a lot of, curves, all right. and I think a lot of that had to do with the uh, the the person they had doing the uh, the rotoscoping for the action. Yes, yeah, so you showed if, me. You if, showed if you me a behind the scenes picture. Yeah, it was really cool. If you have cool. to look at the rotoscoping pictures, you know she looks like the character of Tila, which actually looked a lot like the character of uh, Princess Aura from Flash Gordon, their their earlier yes. series. And so I'm kind of wondering if she did a lot of like the rotoscoping for that series too. Or which they just took the same footage and was just like, well, we already did half the animation. All we have to do is just change the outfit slightly. Well, I think because if Bob's you look, your uncle, and we're out to production. Yeah. Well, if you look at the original picture, they actually had 
them dressed in outfits that look like he man yes. and T. And I thought that was actually pretty cool, you know. You could see that they had uh, uh, lines on their face so that you can know where the animators were able yes. to draw the actual characters' faces over the over them over yep. the rotoscope. It was pretty cool. So I mean, the I, the the criticism of this being a woke version of He Man, I'm just like I, I I'm not buying it because it's like, were you watching the same cartoon I was in the 1980 in in the 1980s? Well, it, I I did myself a favor. Uh, with with discussion and knowing that we're doing this whole He-Man thing, that I did not watch anything related to this new series. That's uh, the cool. only thing that I saw was the uh, commercial when mm -hmm. we first started talking about it. Which but like, any yeah. type of um, any type of criticism press or criticism, um, any other other commercials or people talking I wasn't gonna about let that it. If I see if I see it on YouTube and someone is saying that they're going to give their you know criticism, I skip right past it yep. and I'm going to say, you know what? I'm waiting to sit here with you guys. To watch it for the first time, and we can make our minds and up. And draw your own conclusion. Exactly, because that's what you're supposed to do. I don't really have a problem right? with criticism. I agree with you. I think you should make, watch, listen, right. view whatever it is before you start reading what critics have to say. Sometimes you do get some very insightful information from critics. But I do also feel, to the point that you're making regarding the woke society, I feel like everyone's jumping on this bandwagon, and they're just trying to find any and every excuse to put something down as you said, without even looking at it. Yeah. I mean, the the Passion of the Christ is probably a prime example of that. People were putting that movie down in droves, and nobody it hadn't even come out yet. Yeah. But um, I mean, yeah, that, that's I think that's the thing with this one. It's a, it's a I, I've kind of considered it from the artwork a a, a reimagined continuation because it doesn't look exact. It doesn't. It's not going to look exactly like the no. original artwork, but there are going to be shades L of that series. Like but we it said, shouldn't. It, it looks yeah. like it's a little bit more badass from what we grew up I with. Think I think mean, they didn't, right. didn't. They make like Orko look like a, he's like got big pumped arms now or something. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> if you look at the progression of art from or, no, artists, uh, I should say artists, uh, especially with cartoons. Yeah. You see, prime example, Bugs Bunny. There is at least seven to eight different versions oh, yeah. of Bugs Bunny as time right. goes on. Yeah. And it all depends on the all, artist, too. Exactly. I was just going to mention, because as Brett and I grew up, he and I could, uh, we, 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 we commented this a long time ago, to how he and I could tell exactly what uh, director was doing the cartoon. Oh, just yeah. By, just by the first just two by the seconds. Way yep. The first two seconds of, of the Merry Melodies or uh, you know Looney Tunes just start showing up, we could tell who the director was. You could, sure. see, who was Chuck, you could see who was Chuck Jones or Bob McKimson, who are two of my Favorite directors. I could yeah. always Freeling. spot. Oh, Freeling, Freeling also did a lot of work on that. But always yes, spot a Chuck absolutely. Jones. Absolutely, they, they, they Chuck Jones. Chuck Jones. Uh, he was great because he brought a lot of comedy to what he did. Well, Whereas the other directors, I think, were more on let's get the film done. Chuck was like, let's get the film done, but let's make it funny while we're doing it. The other great thing about him was one of these things where it's like Tex Avery would do like the exaggerated, uh, right? The you know takes the, the eyes going droopy, out, yeah. things yeah. like that. Yeah, yep. things would just go, you know, you know, just blast out everywhere Chuck Jones most commonly his, uh, whenever they see a very attractive woman yeah well Chuck Jones he made his uh, his reactions very small like when you see Daffy Duck re reacting to Bugs Bunny's uh, re to him all of a sudden it's like instead of like his eyes bugging out his eyes got really small like you know <laughs> it was like this this just complete opposite and it worked it was it, it just, worked so you know, it worked well yeah it, you know, like we we could always tell what style it was so I mean what what style do you think they say that that this is supposed to be following. I think it's close. I feel like it's closest to more like a. It's not quite like anime manga, but manga. But it's uh, it's kind of in that vein. It has that uh, that sort of energy to it. Even a little bit of the character design reminds me a little bit of the you know like yeah. the, the a lot of the Japanese animations out there. And I, I from the the pictures I've seen and what I've you know what I've read uh, the little I've read up about it, I like it. I mean, I it, it still has that feel of the original Masters of the Universe cartoon, but it, it's. It's going in a direction they probably would have loved to have gone in in the 1980s if standards and practices. Yeah, had they, they had the permission, sure. Okay, so back in the early 80s, um, uh, it had Richard Lynch. This movie I'm talking about. Sword and the Sorcerer. So the thing about that movie was two characters had these obnoxiously huge swords. Like like one character had this handle that had three blades connected to it where he could shoot off two of the blades. Was this put on Mystery Science Theater 3000 at one point? Possibly. Okay. And um, the thing that always got me was one of the characters, Richard Lynch's character, 
whose name I can't remember in the story right now. But he wielded this ginormously huge sword. And the Triclops guy has the sword similar to design of Really? It. So this sword that you see in this in this toy character's hand is almost identical to Richard Lynch's character's sword in The Sword and the Sorcerer. Oh my and god, that's what Triclops, I dug about this get guy. your bone around him. Like, ah! There's actually it's another interesting thing about that movie. There's two versions of that movie made because uh, in the early 80s, uh, around the time when Conan the Barbarian was made, yes. uh, there was a lot of censorship going on of what you could and couldn't show. Oh, okay, yeah. And the censorship, I think, got a little out of hand for this movie because in the end scene where the big main battle comes into play, the main character is supposed to be crucified on this board, uh, like an X board oh, yeah, and yeah. like his arms are, are, are his hands are I, I think yeah I know what right. you're talking, yeah they made that scene he uh, the scene comes up he does this this key man overpower energy rips one of his hands out of the the board takes off his gag and screams Cromwell that was Richard Lynch's character's name okay he he screams out the guy's name and then the the war starts and everyone starts fighting each other the remake of that or the the edited version is instead of putting a nail through his hand they put a strap on his hand. Really? Yeah. And it wasn't even on his wrist. It was on his it was on his hand to cover up, I guess, I don't know, why would they cover up? Yeah, but yeah. He, he had to use some, uh, an amazing amount of force to rip that strap off the board to then say it. I've seen both scenes, and I, 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 to this day, I can't get it. Like, why would you do that? There's no nudity. Yeah. There's no swears. There's nothing other than the fact that a guy's got a nail in his hand. Wasn't there a scene of, like, somebody in Excalibur, like, uh, really roughly plowing some woman? A couple of times. It's funny because it, it's I'm not in a ha ha way, but uh, one of, uh, I had a teacher. There was a substitute teacher one day in high school who decided to show us that movie, and so uh, they he, he forgot he, that scene was there. He forgot that, so he's trying to he fa- he's trying to fast forward it through the scene, and uh, it just becomes more and more funny. So it becomes like a sped up sped up uh, b- boning. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I know the scene you're talking about. It's when Uthar, uh, Merlin changes Uthar's appearance to look like uh, the enemy's leader yeah. so he can go and have sex with the guy's wife. That I was just, it. The guy, that was the whole point of that war. It's, it's funny. the guy who You played look Mer- good. I want to have sex with you. I'm going to start a war <laughs> just so I can bone you. Actually, the guy who played Merlin in that movie uh, also played Sherlock Holmes along Robert Duvall in a movie called The 7% Solution in 1976. Yes. yes. Nicole Williamson's his name. He was a great Sherlock Holmes. He's, but I guess he was one of these actors who was very, I heard he was very tough to work with. Uh, Temperamental. You know, Unfortunately, there are some people oh, yeah. where greatness. I mean, yes, Brando. We can use it. We can use it. Brando, greatness. Uh, These are guys who've really mastered their craft. Unfortunately, are you gonna be Superman soon? Can you fly over to Italy and get me a cannoli? <laughs> I just want you to know, I'm not gonna wear pants in this scene. I'm also not wearing underwear the whole movie. I'm just not gonna wear pants. And I'm gonna wear a. I'm gonna wear a. He, I think one of his movies, he actually what was it the Island of, of Doctor Monroe. He wore like one of those uh, oh ice cooling. hat. Yes, yeah. he wore an ice hat. I'm just gonna wear this in the scene for no reason whatsoever. There, actually, interesting. You mentioned the Island of Doctor Monroe. That movie was supposed to be shot totally different. It was supposed to be more of the uh, Burt Lancaster version. Oh, where really? He's more action oriented, but because, but because uh, Brando. I mean, a good example. Val Kilmer's in that movie. Yep. Val Kilmer's role had to be increased for him to have actually more acting lines because Brando kept taking himself further and further out of the scenes. the The whole scene where he's sitting in a chair and and the little little mini me version of him is putting ice in the cup. That was they. Brando was just sitting there doing that, and they were like, you know what, director, film that. We'll put that in the movie. He's just sitting there doing that. There was nothing in the script for that. They were like. He's not doing anything else. Let's film doing. Well, that. I heard he was somebody who was uh, famously he didn't learn his lines and he would just he would he would read it off cue card or he was like he'd either read it off cue cards something like that to make it look like he was like trying to reach into the uh, almost like reaching into the air to mm-hmm. think of what he's thinking of. But he he he'd succeed. Most people you know you know reading cue cards look like they're well reading cue cards. Yeah, you you can't help it. Your eyes just veer off to the side. Good job. Which always gets me when you see those commercials of people who are who are trying to be like I'm telling you this message from the heart. <laughs> this is coming from yeah. me. Oh, 
it's like or no. when they're when they're reading they're doing something and it's supposed to be like it's from the heart but you can see their eyes on, on the teleprompter going left to right and be yep. like yeah. if this was really from the heart you would have memorized that fucking memorized. paragraph this is coming from the it's just line. a paragraph <laughs> heart you jerk uh, heart exactly. all right guys so okay. i think are we ready to begin this and actually so. start watching what? the first episode and that's what we're going to be Let's doing do today it. folks we're all actually right. going to be watching we're actually going to be watching the first the first episode, actually, we're going to be watching episodes from uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation live and uh, be reacting to it as we watch it. Okay, so let us begin. Okay, I like the font already. Already going for the He Man font. Yep. In the center of the Planet Eternia rules Castle Grace. Oh, they're using the original box art. I think that's so cool. Its power sought by the, the original toy art. Of Snake Mountain. Yeah, okay, Century yes. The Snake, Snake Mountain. Mountain. Yep. Oh, that's cool. By the demon Skeletor and oh, Gigaway. yeah. What the hell? Sexy as fuck. <laughs> Defends the secrets of Castle Grayskull as He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Actually, the guy who originally did the uh, artwork for uh, the uh, the toys was, did, did very Frank presented type art, and you can kind of tell. I like the uh, this opening with the almost like the uh, the Boris style uh, oil painting. Yeah. You know? Like I said, sort of a nod to the now it's start, Now you can see it's starting to get a little bit more like uh, computerized. Yep. Who's that Kevin Smith guy? All right, I totally get what you're saying now regarding the um, anime aspect of this. But you know what it also kind of reminds me a little bit of? Uh, Teen Titans. Yes, yeah, uh, you're Yeah, right. I was going to say that, or uh, even reminiscent of the, um, uh, the Superman uh, uh, animation. Or, in a way. or yeah. Batman, the Batman animated yeah, yeah, yeah. series, yeah. the one with uh, Mark Hamill as a Joker. That's right. Up, oh, Diedrich Bader as uh, King Randor. Now, of course, um, the, the, time, the show opens, uh, Mass of the Universe Revelation opens up where uh, this big coronation is going to happen with Tila. And Tila is going to become man at arms for, you know, the royal family. And, um, you know, there's this big, huge to-do. You know, she's coming in. You know, man at arms or Duncan is very, very proud of, um, of, of her because basically he is... You know, he's her surrogate father. She's an orphan. Nobody knows who she she really is. You know, where she she really came from. Spoiler! She's a sorceress's daughter. But you, probably if you knew that from the original show, that wouldn't be a big surprise. Um, Prince Adam is there. Well, is that Liam Neeson? No, Liam Cunningham. I was called for an airstrike. Tila, you look like a warrior goddess. Thank Which is what was the uh, description the on I think Tila's uh, package honor, uh, for the toy? Feel like for decades now, I've watched with pride as you grew to be a brilliant technician, a lethal oh, that's good. warrior, Sorry, and a that's master. Not, that's not Liam Neeson. No, that's uh, Liam Cunningham who played Davos on uh, Game of Thrones. Tila. But yeah, it does sound a lot like Liam Neeson. Don't allow this kind of thing, but... Thank you, Dad. Aww. Is feeling many emotions. Hey, and here comes a prick to ruin the, all the fun. Oh, we all love yes, Orko. Where is Adam? Damn! Did he grow? Well, why did you open the door if you're just gonna come out? <laughs> She makes an entrance. Yeah. Even on Tila's big day, Snake Mountain takes no rest, I see. Meanwhile, Skeletor uh, hatches a crazy plan to uh, get back into Grayskull and 
and basically take it over. But he's not interested in Grayskull, he's interested in something underneath Grayskull. Oh, what's with the cape? Yeah, that's kind of new. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's kind of like the old series. Yep, absolutely. Think your latest runes could fool the sorceress of Grayskull. Well, yeah. yeah. Too loud. Too loud. <laughs> Aww. Uh, I can help you, Cringer. All we need Actually, have you guys magic. seen? Have you guys seen the Tick series from on Amazon? The what, guy who plays live action. Yeah. No. The guy. Oh well, the guy who plays uh, Arthur on that series is doing the voice of uh, Orko in this. Oh, cool. Yeah, we met. I, my wife and I met him at one of the Comic Cons. He's a super nice guy. That's the way pretty much every actor or performer should be. Yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, yeah, you made a great piece of art, but if we're not here to enjoy it, you get nothing. Yeah. Appreciate us, asshole. I don't remember the cat being this cowardly. He was. Uh oh. Oh, uh, who the hell is that? Wait, what? Wait. Wait, what? Uh, you're not. Adam. I am Adam, Prince of Eternia. And... Oh, 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 okay, okay. Ow. Ow. Actually, what I like is they, they made Adam and He-Man a little bit different in this. Whereas in the original series, it was basically they had the same body type. Yes, yes. It was almost like the Superman, like wearing the glasses was all yes. they needed to... To make him look completely different. Where this is more like Billy Bats and Captain Marvel. Girl is man at arms material. Well, you never had to prove it to me. You've always been the most ready person I've ever met. I was thinking more like uh, Captain America. Says, no oh yeah, it, when that that really thin, scrawny <laughs> version turns into right. into uh, what's his name? Chris uh, Evans. Chris matter. Evans. Yeah. I know everything there is to know about. Well, with uh, the Billy Bats and Captain Marvel, Billy Batson starts off as a kid who turns into a superhero adult. So it's kind of similar. Yes, Shazam. Thank yeah. you. That's why I couldn't remember what, the, what you were talking about. Yes, yeah, Shazam. Yeah, Shazam's always going to be I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Captain i got to say it, though. That movie was terrible. It was okay. I actually kind of liked it. The only thing that was a saving grace was Mark Strong. True. Always the bad guy is the one that's the saving grace on a bad superhero movie. Yeah, now I can hear the Mark Hamill in yeah. the voice. It's nice. Remember that that character from uh, from uh, the original Toys uh, Faker, which was supposed to be like a fake He-Man, but he had, he was he had blue skin with like a like wearing Skeletor's chest thing, and it's like yeah, that's supposed to fool people. With this one, this makes more sense. Sorry, sorceress, I'm not clawful, but I can be. Lena Headley is even evil Lynn. That makes sense. I think I said the name right. Time after time, you try to take this castle, but you will never succeed, Skeletor, because you're not the Lord of Destruction. You're nothing but the Lord of Failure. <laughs> oh yeah. But my repeated failures were but a bridge to my success. Oh, that is so Mark Hamill right there. Yeah. I don't mind the fact he's not trying to do like the Alan Oppenheimer uh, Skeletor. It's more like a, a version of the Joker. Right. I don't even see it as a version of the Joker. I well, just see it as a version voice. of him. Yeah. Yeah, of him doing this. Like, I'm not going to try to make a voice. Yeah. I'm just going to talk about it. Yeah. And I, I think it's great, actually. I like it. Yeah. Cool. You want to pay me to be Mark Hamill? Give me a second. <clears throat> I'm Mark Hamill. Yeah. Well, Done. He does okay, have there you go. That scratch in his voice. Yeah, he does have that perfect scratch voice yeah. for it. He yeah. just doesn't need to be that guy when he's talking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it worked for the the original series, but for this one, I think this works yeah. with the character. That's the thing. I think the original series was very driven more comedically. Yes. Because Orko was a lot funnier. This Orko's a lot more sarcastic from what I'm seeing. That Orko was just... Yeah, he's always been a prick to me. Yeah, yeah. But... well, he was. Well, as you get older, or, you know, for if you're a seven or eight-year-old, Orko's hysterical. When, you, when you're, like, our age, Orko's just, so like you said. Call your champion. Yep, there. That's what I remember from the commercial. No, yes. yes. So far, I'm enjoying pretty good. Yeah, I know. He's beaming with pride today. That's parental pride. Something I hope I can feel one day. 
Oh. Oh, what the fuck? Well, he doesn't every know he's He-Man. Every father says that. Every Well, father. in the original series, Adam was supposed to, you know, he was playing the goof off, the sort of the way Clark Kent would uh, act like he was kind of inept, so people didn't think, oh, are you Superman? Only now she sends the call out for help? <laughs> because she thought she could take him. Again, even shows that in superheroes, arrogance is prevalent no matter what. Exactly. I like how they've mixed in like uh, sort of uh, different alien-looking characters with the sort of humanoid characters. Just so oh, you know, on, this hold on. So she now became the new Man at Arms. Yep. So, so was thing... he retiring? I think so. Yeah. Sort of. This is the. Uh... All rich people, this way, this way. All poor people, get out of here. Be careful, Adam. There was always, I think there was always that uh, idea in the original series that his mother kind of... Uh, she probably didn't have all the details, but she suspected something. That's what I was... Yeah. She suspected her son was more than he let on. Yeah. Like, she knew his goofiness was a ruse. Well, it's funny, because they actually... The original series, uh, they took an idea from one of Filmation's original previous cartoons, this one, Black Star, where, where um, you know, uh, the uh, character Black Star was a uh, Earth space pilot yes, who lands on a, a planet and becomes the, the defender. Whereas in this one, He-Man's mother is actually an astronaut who lands on Eternia, falls in love with He-Man's father, and has uh, and gives birth to Prince Adam. Yeah, yeah. She convenient that a foreigner falls in love with the king. Couldn't fall in True. love with a blacksmith. No. Couldn't fall in love with a, with a sheep herder. No. It's gotta be the king. It's good to be the king. Okay, the transformation, that's awesome. Yeah. You can definitely see where, you know, technology's uh, come a long way since 1983. Well, also, it's doing a lot of that fantastic swooping, you know, low angle cuts. Yeah. And it's how it's doing uh, the rotation around the character as they're transforming. Yeah. So, what ends up happening is um, they go off to, uh, you know, the whole coronation is canceled. Big, huge thing. All the uh, the military basically go off to save Grayskull. The uh, you know Man at Arms and everything. Of course, you know Adam pulls the sword. I have by the power of Grayskull, and he changes into He Man, which is great. He becomes He Man. What happens after that um, gets a little bit crazy. <clears throat> And I like the, I like the the three hundred style metal. Dun, 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 yes. Dun, dun. Well, it is Kevin Smith, and I mean, this is a guy who you know likes. It. No, he like, wanted good music. Yeah. For his show, I get that. Oh, there he is! Yep. I see you. Oh, come on! That should not have happened. Theoretically, he should have saw them coming up from behind. That's true, unless one eye works at a time. I never knew how that character worked. Ooh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Yeah. We're talking about Triclops, right? Oh, Fisto. There's a name for a character. Fisto. Popular with the ladies. <laughs> Sorry. And Trap Jaw. Yep. Actually, the funny thing, if you ever looked at the original Man at Arms figure, he didn't have a mustache in the, the original figure. Uh, yes, he did. No, he did. The original figure, he actually didn't. If you look at the... it was Oh, in the, it Beast was in, Man! In the cartoon, they actually added the mustache. Because I think it, it kind of gave him more of a uh, paternal look. An older look, yeah. yeah. Sort of, you know, he was He-Man's mentor. He was uh, Tila's father. He goes out there. He uh, starts fighting Skeletor. He fights Skeletor. He beats up uh, a bunch of the bad guys. And uh, then they are led down into the lower part of Grayskull that no one's ever seen. It's the heart of Grayskull where this orb, this, uh, this, this orb of magic, I forget the name of it right off the top of my head. And they basically, that's what he wants. He wants the orb of magic. Thor, 
Yeah. With that sense of like, yep, we have an army, but eh, I could do it all myself. Yeah. But we've got a Hulk. Oh. That's interesting because that is a clear sign of murder. Yeah. Well, he, I think he was a uh, uh, an android, so we're talking so, about Faker. Are you all right? Yes, but the robots you? that look like robots. Oh, that's oh. interesting. You make a good you point. Oh, nice. Giving Orko Orko's a little got more. got balls. Oh. Even in the original cartoon, Tila was still a little bit of a badass. Yes, she was. But this one, she's, uh, they've kind of upped it a bit. And Man-at-Arms just punches a horse. Well, that's the thing about Man-at-Arms' suit. Was this Blazing suit. Saddles? <laughs> No, 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 no. That was the thing about Man at Arms' suit. I think he had power arms. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man at Arms. I just thought Man at Arms always meant like, yeah, he's always got a gun on him, you know, or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, basically, he's like Man at Arms is a a non commissioned officer's version of whoa uh, commander in chief, if you think about it, of the military. That is. Just his I love how Mark Hamill just chews up the scenery and everything he's in. You can just tell he's enjoying himself. <laughs> and he, I actually watched, just watched an Joker, interview. Joker fall down noise. <laughs> <laughs> and I just watched an interview with him. He talking about you know, you know, buy, you know, buying Castle Grace to call for his son when, you know, he was younger and just you know, remembering these uh, characters. Is that really something you really want to be advertising? No. Let this be a final battle. Oh, nice. I love that I added that in there. Oh, yeah. And so he wants to crack it so he can have he can absorb the power, or at least that's what he wants to do. What ends up happening though is that um the cracking the orb of power basically will destroy the entire universe. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Alright, I do like the fact that Evil Lynn is a lot more capable in this version. Yeah. Well I know uh what's the name? Uh Sarah Michelle Geller just mentioned uh in an interview, how it seemed like women were more of an afterthought in the uh, in the the uh, series, but to be fair, it was a boys' toy line, and I think they added the female figures into it to, uh, you know, Just so to see if they could attract the girls. Exactly. At that point. Right. Exactly. And but they didn't realize how popular the series would be with girls, and that you know would spawn uh, the uh, She-Ra series. Yep. Yes. Good point. Well, again, underestimation. Exactly. Underestimation of women. And I think little Ooh. they, I think little did they know any of us would be sitting here talking about it, you know, almost forty years later too. Or the fact that Kevin Smith would even make this. I know, years right? Later. Well, I mean, here's the thing, Kevin Smith. Ooh, that was nice. Oh. Oh no. And you were distracted. Oh, this guy right here, Mossman, the, the actor who's playing, it's Alan Oppenheimer, the original voice of Skeletor. Nice. So that's a nice nod to the... Return. You first, Mossman. My one weakness! <laughs> Fire! And lots of it! <laughs> All right, again, that was showing a, something else dying. That's yeah. that that's was a little yes. anticlimactic. We just saw Mossman, and two seconds later, he's I fried. Know. <laughs> oh no! Now you're letting your anger out. But that's showing his, you know, his young oh. side, I guess. As the 
key to the heart of wisdom. That line, you finally use that sword because he never really used the sword in the original series. That's no, right. Never. That's but right. But also, yeah. but wait a minute, wasn't there supposed to be like his sword and his yes. sword had to be merged just to get into Grace? Right. That was the to that was the toy's uh, little uh, gimmick. Is you put the swords together and you can unlock the uh, the jaw door. The jaw bridge. Sorry. Sorry to those who are listening or hardcore Hemians fans, and I screwed that up. Get over it. Yari, Yari. So in the split second that that Sorceress is able, because he cracks the orb, and he and he he basically, um, you know, he's like, he tricks He-Man into using the sword to open up this thing on the basement basement of the uh, castle, and he actually gets stabbed. Like, like he man actually runs them through with the sword for the first time ever, which is something that's never happened in the original show. You know, I mean, he man has like all these like axes and swords and shields and stuff. They never get stabbed in the original show. Well, that's what happens in this one. So. <clears throat> That's badass. Yeah, that, that I like that. I like that it, Grayskull was just an that illusion. That was just that a dun 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 great moment. continuation. Everybody's frozen. I'm holding back time. But time is... And I think I mentioned that uh, the voice of the sorceress is played by... Uh, can the well, yeah, she uh, the uh, uh, voice actress who played uh, Wonder Woman in the uh, Justice League cartoon. But if she's holding back time, Susan Einhorn, I think her name. If she's holding oh, back no, time right. and she's talking to them right now, yeah. isn't their time still advancing? No. So how? No, no. So this is basically what she's created. She's created a Susan time Eisenberg. bubble in a second. I'll figure so out later. imagine having an entire conversation with somebody that lasts for a because second. Oh, she's she's, I mean, I mean, the, the the physics behind this are impossible. Tila was supposed to be the sorceress's daughter. And use the sword like a I mean, yes, technology-wise, we don't have the ability, but theoretically wise, it's possible. The sword of power could absorb the blast and save the universe. Yes, but He-Man, you would have to be wielding it. The power of that much magical energy will kill. So, anyways, what happens is, is that. In the split second that Source is able to stop time, they have to make a decision. Okay, He-Man has to call down the power of Grayskull and absorb all this power before it cracks everything and destroys the entire universe. And it'll probably destroy Skeletor. Okay, great, let's do it. Okay, and Teal is like, but you might get killed, He-Man. I'm sorry, it's still Sarah Michelle Gellar, and, and I'm hearing Buffy when she's talking, and it's... I know. I mean, I know. it's still great because she's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, was like, I appreciate the fact she's working. Oh, yeah. Well, it's funny because it's her and Alicia Silverstone in the same production. Right. Oh, the oh. separation of the sword. Now we have a uh, call back to the original action figure, sort of. Right. So he's creating a new key. Uh-oh. They're losing their powers. Close your eyes, Marion! Wait, <laughs> what? He's just a boy. And that boy is holding all the power of the universe in his So he is like, I'm gonna do it anyway. It's gotta be done. This is a sacrifice I have to make for for Eternia. So he does it by the power of Grayskull. Power comes down. She lets time go. The orb starts to crack. He absorbs all the power from the orb. Trans and translates it into the orb to fix everything. And then what happens is is that like it shows He-Man start to turn back into Adam. Tila sees He-Man as Adam, Prince Adam now. The sword splits in two. 
the good sword and the bad sword. And um, he's just standing there, and Skeletor's like, this boy? Is he man? Like, you know, I, you know, and I'm like, okay. So then basically what happens is, is that the swords disappear. Adam just basically gets zapped into oblivion. Um, and then, you know, the orb is then put back in play and uh, Sorcerer is left behind. And what happens is, is that, you know, they, they secrets out. Shut Adam was he man all the bitch. time. Yeah. So he goes for one. Boom. Yeah, because Tila never knew about his yep. identity. Exactly. Now she knows. Only, uh, it was only the sorceress, man at arms, and Orko, and possibly his mother had an inkling. But everybody else, you know. Whoa. Why is my son always in the bathroom for six hours with the faucet running? What are you doing in there? Wait, 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 wait. That is I'm really boys interesting. Life. How is it there were never any stars before? That was interesting. It actually showed Evelyn having a... A heart. Yeah. She actually had a heart for the guy. Whereas in the original cartoon, you always felt like she was uh, trying to do things for her own end that she really didn't well, never, care about Skeletor. I never felt that she was trying to usurp care Skeletor's role. I felt she was always like the kind of person that was like, you know what? I'm happy really? being number two. Yeah. You're um, the you're the face of this I'm organization. I'm the one that runs things. Yeah. During the battle with Skeletor. Great word. Hey, man. What was the word? You serp. You s <laughs> Are they going to mention that He Man was your son? Kind of wonder. Grayskull has lost her champion. Randor, we've lost our son. <laughs> what? No. Adam is fine. Isn't he, Duncan? My lord. That means she did know. Prince yeah. Adam. And he man. No. It can't be. My lord, I am so sorry you had to find out like this. But the prince ordered us to keep his secret. Get you out. knew! Please? Get out! I strip you of your title and banish you from the palace forever! And if I ever see you again, I will have you executed! They never did that in the original cartoon. Tila, even mention the word execution, no, I they know. couldn't even Out say. My yeah. sight. No. I am done with every one of you. Tila! You knew, didn't you? And you never said anything, not even to him. Everybody I ever trusted since I was a child knew Adam was He-Man. I have laid my life on the line for every one of you, but you're all a pack of liars. And Adam was no different. Tila, that's enough. Yes, it is, because I've had enough. Enough of your secrets and this lies. This is kind of how you'd expect enough her to react. And the yeah. it made. You know, just uh, This is intense. Palace, yeah. And enough of Castle Grayskull to last me a lifetime. I'm done looking out for the people who never told And so me the what ends up happening is that, you know, Cringer and Orko Skeletor and Duncan and, and uh, Sorceress were the ones that knew. And of course, so Tila back at the castle is really, yeah, sadly, that's really upset nice. by this. I don't know why. She complained, she says that, you know, everybody's been lying to me about this. And she just basically says, "I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna support this royal family anymore. I'm not gonna be part of this whole thing anymore." And she throws down her sword. She just walks out, and I basically like the band down. gets broken up. <laughs> it's funny, Orko's line saying, "We can get through this." That's kind of a callback to the original series, the way Orko would be. Oh yeah. You know, we, yeah. we can get always through. trying to find a way to appease everyone. Yeah. yeah. He was a he was a yes man, but a but a, a conscientious yes man. Yeah. Because Orko would always be the first one to say, hey, I got an idea. And he'd be the first one to say, no, that's a bad idea. And then give reasons why it's a bad idea. Yeah. At least he wouldn't be saying, like, we can't do this. Voice of reason. Now, myself personally, um, there's a lot of talk about female characters in the show. And, you know, 
I think that the way that the character, I mean, I have no problem with Tila as a character. I think Tila was a really cool sh character in the show to begin with. Uh, but I think that there's a lot that was written here. There's a lot of motivations here that are missing to really drive the character to do some of the things that she does or some of the aspects that, of her character that she's she's sort of missing. I think that one of the biggest problems that this show has is that it's like it feels like it's accelerated. They really they really didn't know how to tell a a He-Man story um appropriately. And like I said, this is not a TV show. This is like a this is like a mini movie. This is a movie. This should have been a movie. It should not have been a TV series. Uh, where they're going to have another season with a cliffhanger. They should have had a beginning, a middle, and an end. They should have clearly ended it the way it should have been. This is not a, this is not a season of a show. Um, I think that, like I said, uh, I'm not upset with it one way or the other. It's just a program to me. But... If you're if if He-Man was integral into your life, so much so that you you would be upset by this, then you shouldn't watch it. You shouldn't bother to watch it. Vote with your wallet, okay? That's just my opinion. If you don't like something, don't buy it. That's simple. You know, your money is your vote. If you buy for if you buy something that you don't like, then Who's the problem? Okay, that's what you got to say to yourself. Uh, you know, all that that's just the attitude. Um, I wouldn't say this show is terrible. I would say the production quality is good. I would say the animation is very well done. I would say the character design is pretty cool. But the story is mediocre at best. You know... The voice acting is great. The voice actors that they have for this are really well done. And they've got some really good at voice acting. Obviously, Mark Hamill, Skeletor. But you see him at the beginning, and you see him at the end. That's it. You don't see him anywhere else in the show. I mean, he might have little blibs and blurbs here and there, but it, it's not really indicative of what the original show is like. Um, I would say that if you like I said, if you wanted to watch if you want something that reminded you of the original show, this isn't bad, but it's mediocre at best. If you don't like it, don't buy it. If you if you have a suspicion that you're not gonna like it, don't watch it. But that's just my opinion. And there we go, everybody. Episode that was one. episode one what of think, the guys? Masters of the Universe. What do you think? Thoughts? I think as a re not even a retelling no we can't even say that as a continuation continuation of a thought because they never actually finished the idea of masters of the universe back in the 80s and 90s okay there was never so, a final episode there was exactly like, yeah. so kevin smith has every right to say look this is how i think it would have happened and i gotta be honest yes so far i am amazed at what i'm watching yeah. one evil lynn actually dug the man she had feelings for the dude now you have to admit skeletor was a serious serious sociopath i mean oh, well, let's I, look at his let's look at him uh from a, well i think you know aspect. wanting wanting to be able to uh i don't know rule the universe with an iron fist makes you somewhat of a you make this sound like a bad know. thing i don't know if it's a sociopathic thing i think he's good skeletor i endorse him He's a good guy. Yes. Hey, my kind of man. Yes, we my should run kind together. Of evil. Yes. Next time we do a rally, I'm going to call you up. Uh, you and I are just going to do a rally together. And, uh... <laughs> okay. So let's, no, no, let's look at it from that point of view. Skeletor. We all agree Skeletor is bad. Yeah. He, he has a cold heart. His only desire is power. Now, if he were to tap into the knowledge of the universe, what do you think? would really happen to him at that point. Did you ever hear the story of how he, the, the artist who created him, how he was created? Well, how he has like a skeleton face? Yeah. Because he looks like he's got a, even though his body is blue, he but, looks like he's got a, a flesh but body. you know how he was, in, what inspired the whole creation of Skeletor? No. 
Well, it, it was on. There's a, a couple uh, documentaries actually on Netflix. One was, uh, I think, uh, I think it's called The Power of Grey Scholar. And the other was The Toys That Made Us. And one of the artists, uh, he, when he was younger, he went into a, I, th I forget if it was in, in California or if it was in like Long Island or in New York. It was like a, uh, one of these uh, tr uh, carnivals. And he was in one of those uh, House of Horrors. And he's just walking around. And I think, you know, it's like you have things pop out a at you, to, you, know, as, you know, as a kid to scare the crap out of you. And at one point, I think he either stepped on like a, a board or something like that and triggered something. And all of a sudden, this, this body falls from the – either falls from the ceiling or comes out of one of the cabinets. It's no, like, that's, that's, that's funny. So it's was like, the yeah. cadaver just the body and there was like maybe a, a fake head on top? Or no, was the was actual real, like it was, skin and – It was the that. actual skin embalmed. Wow. And they were they headed this carnival. I don't know. That's and you let a little kid see that pop out at you? This is like Guess the, what, this man. Like the 1950s, I was going to say that's that's the 50s. Like they used to like sell toys oh, yeah. that had uh, like actual like like the chemistry sets used to have oh, yeah. uh, like actual real like brilliant poison and poison, arsenic yeah. and stuff like but Jesus Christ. Fast forwarding years and years later as he was creating the characters, that's the image that popped into his mind and that's how he created Skeletor was from that you have Childhood to admit, memory. you have to admit, Skeletor is unique. Yes. I have never seen, other than the Crimson Ghost, which is the Misfits logo, I have never seen anything like Skeletor before or after his creation. There's always been ugly ass looking creatures, and then there's always been really buff looking bad guys. But the fact that you merge the two into Skeletor... I've never seen a jacked skeleton. Or a Jack Skellington. <laughs> He took. That's where the joke thunder. was going. Ah, uh, but no. Thank this, you, Brett. But nah, think nah, about nah. it. There nah. is Skeletor is so unique. Now, if you remember the movie Masters of the Universe, Frank Langella plays uh, Skeletor. As far as the head's concerned, you see the prosthetic makeup. That oh yeah, it was still pretty darn good. Yeah. Still pretty darn good. Oh no, no, no. I'm not questioning the goodness of it. What I'm questioning though is the fact that. The face, you could see movement in the bone. So, unfortunately, you were thinking to yourself, okay, this is like some type of weird spell. They couldn't do uh, – this is a actual skull that you see in front of you. Right. right. My jaw that moves up and down is only moving up and down for the purpose of giving you the impression I'm speaking. Theoretically, he shouldn't have to move his jaw to speak. He has no lips to make the ooh and the yeah. ah yeah. and the la 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 sound. He can't do that. I did like the fact that uh, Frank Frank Langella played Skeletor like a uh, like something out of Shakespeare, like Hamlet. Yes, yes, he plays him very uh, over the top ish. It's like the, he he's like, a theater actor too. So. Right, but he's he's like he's like thinking to himself, you know what? I'm in a very shoddy play, yeah. and I'm in I'm getting paid very little for my service. I was Shakespearean trained for. God six, man. The funniest thing so is I'm I going will... to make this my grand. The funniest thing opus. was his his son was a huge Masters of the Universe fan. So the only reason he did this movie is for his his son to watch. And the the day they took they started in the, th the theaters, his son fell asleep during the film. Right. On behalf of Jamie, Andrew, and Wayne, thank you for listening to the Mental Suppository. Until next week, this is Brett Herpels saying. <laughs> Come on, come on, one more! You can do this, He-Man! Can this be the end of He-Man? Yeah, rest it on your throat, chump. The Mental Suppository has been produced by Brett Herholtz and Jamie Billings and distributed by M The Media Project. Theme music generously donated by Mr. B, The Gentleman Rhymer. Visit his webpage at gentlemanrhymer.com. We would love to hear from our fans. Email us at mentalsuppository at gmail.com. What are your neighbors saying about M the Media Project? Terrible. Disgraceful. I've never been so insulted in all my life. I feel so scandalized. Ooh. Ah, bunch of lousy bums. Get out of my neighborhood. Think of the children. I don't want this kind of garbage around here. I got your podcasts right here. What does this all prove? We think you should move to a better neighborhood. M, the media project. We don't know how to fix your stupid neighbors, but we do make great podcasts.